community and creating an ecosystem around that because when you see an entertainer a professional has that he's not just the one he's not the only one in that circle he has professionals that work with him you might see cinematographer around them photographers around them content creators around them even accountants around them bouncers you know security details it's quite an ecosystem that if well annexed you know it has the penchant for creating a very big revenue for the nation and we have been seeing it i think one of the biggest event center in lagos is a hotel and you've seen many of these are comedians selling it out even you know show state here yeah, many of them are doing well for themselves well we have them in the house today one of them in the studio with us and one of them will be joining us or oh, he is already joining us virtually and um, um in the studio with me today we have him he's a comedian a movie actor skip maker and seasoned mc as well he's popularly known as a doctor bengu maybe not a medical doctor but then dr bengu good morning good morning good, good to morning. have you join us today it's my greatest pleasure. that dr bengu is he a medical doctor or just nah. a small doctor oh <laughs> <laughs> nice small doctor actually yeah it's a fun doctor <laughs> <laughs> all right very well and of course uh, virtually joining us at this time we have him olowo shile akinto mide a coca popularly known as mide coca cfi he joins us you know via zoom mr coca good morning good morning sir good morning Matt. oh good morning sir good to join you this morning all right Ve yeah thank you Happy. very much for joining us how are you doing i'm fantastic i'm good all I'm right sure. that, that that's good to know um please hang in there as they say um you know um charity begins at home so let me start here with uh mr bengo many of you might want to say who is this bengo that we are talking about i'd like you to see one of his works and then we we'll continue from there all right, um, I understand we will have that later as well. Dr. Bengo, um, you are a comedian, a movie actor, an entertainer, let me just put it. The only thing I've not seen your CV is maybe singing, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> do how has too. it been uh, for your act, for your craft? Uh, we thank God. Uh, though it's not been easy, but it's a long way coming. So uh, we just say that um, it takes consistency and... Um, you know, when you don't relent, mm. um, um, you see positivity, positivity in everything you do. So, mm. uh, what I would just say just, is just God and um, mm. you know consistency. When you don't relent in what you do, mm. so comedy is is a big um, community. Yeah. Uh, when, and yeah. when it comes to the business part of it, um, it it's something that um, you need to convince people to to know the worth of it because most people just see comedians like people who just um, don't really know what they want to do that was before but now you know when um we have the likes of um the hellites and um people that have, have brought comedy into limelight in the country and um so many people have seen um what comedy can do that's why we see everybody wants to turn themselves to comedians mm. you see on social media now everybody wants to create a content around comedy just mm. to make people laugh but to people who do it professionally, who will say that um, uh, it's really a big deal and um, you know, we, we will not relent in it. All right, we, sir, we, I, will, mm, okay, yeah, I, will, I would like to ask you that, have you always wanted to be a comedian? Because, or do you have a profession where you have to you know, delve into entertainment? We've had, we have the likes of, um, if I was as a study, who was a lawyer and now into entertainment, uh, were you into a profession, uh, the normal profession, before you delved into comedian, or you've always wanted to be a comedian? You know, um, um, uh, <laughs> when uh, just like people say, when you were in school, in primary school, you you say, oh, "What do you want to be in future?" That's your ambition. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, it starts from when we were small. When our yeah. parents, whenever they want to pray for everybody, you mm. just, they just pray for you to have just three professions in your life. Mm. Or my adagba, I the lawyer, I the doctor, I the engineer, I the doctor. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Besides that, no any other profession. <laughs> so you choose one out of it. So anybody yeah. ask you, what do you want to be? I want to be an engineer. Secondly, school changes again. Yeah. Mm. So then I feel like I'm a father is an uh, is an accountant. Okay, I want to be an accountant. Mm. You know, but after life, you feel like um, you know what you what you want to do, what mm. what what you do effortlessly, mm. and uh, you know 
So I graduated in secondary school as that uh, as an uh, like commercial student because mm. I want to be an accountant. Right. Mm. But you know, after that, well, I've been in this craft and I feel like okay, I feel more comfortable around anything art and you know? also. I had to receipt for another exam, and um, I was, you know, trying to study theater art because mm. that's the keyword. And mm. uh, I was denied admission for good four years, and I didn't choose any other course. Wow. I kept registering, and um, you know, I had to study mass communication because it's still in line with it. So <laughs> you are uh, still communicating. Yes, of course, yes, because <laughs> it's my line. Well, I'm back to school now yeah. uh, after graduation, after NYSC. Yeah. After all, right now I, I'm I, I'm studying theater, the theater that I desire to study. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, that's I a good one. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, I um, wanted to um, our viewers, by the way, to have a glimpse of what um, you know Dr. Bengu does, and I think we are ready for that now. Yes, this leader is bad. Fine. Wait until it's, it's time to renew his mandate and say no. But don't condemn your country. Don't cause Nigeria. It's a beautiful land. Land of prosperity. I just... I have a full belly of uh, rice, my man, and uh, everything. So before I overly digest it, <laughs> I want to say thank you once again. You leave Daniel out of the game here. This is not about Daniel. I do not impose anything on Daniel. You may just live here. Among the goats, you complain about the life that you chose. You are not a victim. Not at all. Your generosity can see something dirtier and meaner. You are capable of facing an admission that you will send me for it, but I am not the one who put you where you are. I have nothing to do with it. You are not sacrificing yourself as you say. You, you chose to sit, sit on the sidelines because you're afraid, because, because your pride made your head explode before you can even come up with a bleeping sum of an idea. And, and now you wake, wake up in your girlfriend and, and you need So when I say you make this brand, you put it here. Are you, are, you, are you learning? Now you put your hand here. Then the other hand here. You put your other hand here. Okay. Now you put the other hand here. Why are you putting it? You must slowly look into high ball to high ball. Let me hold that. Kiss the bride. You know, interesting what you have there, and I, I think that's an array of some of what you do. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, as a um, skit maker, as an actor, because I saw a monologue there, and of course, as MC as well. Um, you know, anything that fits or fits the bill. That's very fine as well. But quickly, before we go to me, Jay, I would like to ask you about entertainment and comedy in Ocean State. But maybe we should take uh, me there right now. Me, Jay, see far. Still with me. Oh, okay. All right. We'll get back to me, Jay, Coca uh, as soon as we can so that we have the conversation going with him as well. Uh, let's come straight to it. You are based in Ocean State here. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. How as I know we see, you know, you, you describe some professionals. Okay. Uh Mide Koka, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Right. Very well. Um, very well. Thank you for being there as well. Uh, let me ask you, I just spoke to uh, you know, uh, Dr. Bengu here and I asked him, how has he been? But let me start with you this way. Comedians are known to give humor, to make people happy. You know, they create jokes and top top jokes as well. And it takes creativity to do that. Of course, it comes naturally as well. It's quite some work. But let me ask you, why creating, why writing, while the comedy or the jokes comes to you naturally, are comedians always happy people? Do you do it from a place of joy and happiness every time? So, um, 
being a comedian is like every other job, um, just like your office job. Um, if it's something you love to do, I think you uh, you dispatch it happily all the time you get to do it. Mm. You understand? But it doesn't mean you are in a good mood all the time. We all have our moods, we all have times we are at our lowest, we have times that we are at our highest. You get what I'm saying? But then, uh, yes, comedians are happy to be because it's, it's, uh, we are transferring energy. So if we are in a bad state, so many times comedians don't like to hold the microphone or climb the stage because they are not in a good state of mind. Because the truth is, what you give the audience is what they give you back. Mm. But when you know you are not in the right frame of mind, that, that is not the time to go and hold the microphone and say you want to perform. We have a lot of people that does that and they still get away with it, but for me, it doesn't work that way. I need to be in the right frame of mind. I need to be happy, to be able to make you happy. If I'm not happy, then I don't know. I'll try my best, but I might not get the best of me. All right. And quickly, you know, um, someone I want to say, what does he do? Perhaps we have um, one of two people who doesn't know. We allow you to see an actor, you know, of um, Medieco Cassia file for you to have a hang of some of what he does. The former church where they go, they go just cast out demon. They not go give them transport. May they feel go far. They'll come the over around. They find the next victim. Very Last, last, the pastor used the church play bed Nigeria. I invited um, people from my, from my child school, my daughter's school, they increased school fees. So I gave them free, free tickets. So they are here, they are here today. But my daughter never started to talk, so I don't really know what they pay for. Because they pay, they pay. Yo, yo, come on. Die. Talk over the pay money. All right, interesting one, Media Coca there. You know, talking about the payment of school fees on your on your daughter, by the way. I can relate, by the way. So that's why I was quite, you know, smiling that. And by the way, I think congratulations are in order. We just had a sold out show and um big ups to you. And uh, let me just ask you, how as just like I said, you just had a big show. Was that your ed, your first and quickly how has been your journey? Did you always have you always wanted to be a comedian? I asked Bengo the other time. How has your journey been like? Quickly. So um, growing up, I, I I think I saw the confusion and the state of the country quite early. So I I didn't really pinpoint what I wanted to become. I was just trying a lot of things. I was there and there. I was trying my hands on a lot of things. I never wanted. I never said I wanted to be anything, but I knew at the point I was going to find my path. So um, I, I started dancing. I started dancing. I love to dance. And at the point, I said, I did dance. I said, because the throw body up and down. I don't really get that kind of body. So I stopped dancing professionally. Not like I don't dance anymore, but professionally, I stopped dancing. So there was this day I was watching uh, my TV. I was watching my, no, no, not my TV. I was watching my dad's TV. I never buy TV that time. So um, I saw I would die on night of a thousand laughs and was really cracking people up. And I told myself, come on, you can do this. So that was how it started. So when I got gained admission into university, I told myself, okay, I was going to, I was going to start this. So my first semester in school, on the level, I gave myself out to um, shows, to this. Um, when departments are having their deeds or celebrating one or in the school, I offered myself to, you know, pack them up for like five minutes, ten minutes, and then follow from there. Mm, interesting one there. 
All right, uh, Mide Koka, what uh, inspires you? Where do you get your inspiration? My inspiration, uh, I'm very observant. I, I like to talk about the happening around me more on stage. Um, I can be spontaneous. Too. So there are so many things I say sometimes, I don't plan them before I plan the stage. So, um, but basically, happening around me, politics, um sports what are we but just happening around me i talk more about um you know things happening around me politics sports mm. so anything that happens around me, i turn into radio yeah and uh let me ask you quickly um you know the entertainment sector by the way the comedy uh part of it um in my introduction i talked about how it has evolved from just a hobby, you know, to a business, to what, you know, works with many persons. Because you see comedians, and when they go for their shows, they travel around with as many professionals as they can, especially depending on how big they are. They have, have people taking their pictures, they have people taking their video, they have editors, they have, um, you know, possibly personal assistants. They have people doing a lot for them. So it's not just about the act, you know, really now the jokes are cracking people off, there is a community of people around him. So it shows that this is quite big. But let me tell you, with your own experience so far, do you think we, when I mean we, the entertainment industry in Nigeria, do you mean we are there? I'm talking about the comedy, comedy part now because you see Alibaba, their basket mouth, Bovi, the rest of them, with what we are seeing. Many of them are even on Netflix. They are selling shows outside the shows of this country. Do you think, okay, this is where we are supposed to be, or we are still uh, quite a way far off. Um, we are not where we used to be, but are we there yet? No. Are we far from there? Kind of. Because um, it, takes, it takes one man doesn't make a convoy. The mm. car doesn't make a convoy. Mm. You need a lot of cars to have a convoy. So I think what we have now is a car. Now we need a lot of people to come on board. When we talk of the government, we talk of um, corporate bodies, we talk of um, individuals that can partner with comedians and comedy shows. Because basically, with so many of us are organizing these shows with our own phone. So um, when you go in abroad, in America, for example, mm -hmm. uh, when the comedian comes up, so many comedians, I've not even heard of them down here, but they are selling our shows over there. Um, all they have to do is just prepare for their, for their, for their, uh, uh, prepare their materials and come to deliver. They have sponsors already who does the, the um, preparations for them. They have people who sell tickets for them. They have people who organize the shows for them and they just come there, deliver their jokes and then they are done. But here you are the one um, using your money. You are the one selling tickets. You are the one making sure the hall is packed. You are the one doing a lot of things. You are the one making sure the sound is the way it should be. So, I don't know, but are we there yet? No, we are not there yet. But we are not where we used to be. So, it means we are making progress. All right, uh, Mide Koka. A decade ago, we, we, there was nothing like uh, skit makers. Majorly, we had we had uh, we still have uh, stand-up comedians, and then stand-up comedians was were, were thin and it's still thin now. But now skit makers are at the top of the town. You go on social media, you see skit makers making money, majorly on YouTube on TikTok. Do you feel that uh, skit makers are in competition with stand-up comedians, or do you feel that uh, stand-up comedians are no longer having that um, that glory? They had back then and now. So, um, number one, we are not in competition. Skit making mm -hmm. industry is another genre of comedy. Stand up comedy has been or has been uh, involved for a long time, a longer time than skit making. So, skit making com com coming into the picture is just um, the, the the fact that comedy has evolved. Mm -hmm. You can now sit at the comfort of your own and watch. A speech and then you laugh. Now, for a speech, you need to, you need to, um, it's like a short drama, a very, very short drama where you get to, get you to laugh in like one minute or two minutes 
um, whatever the case may be. So it's just another part. We have people that love speech making. We have people that love stand up comedy. And we have fans of stand up comedy, a lot of them that still believe in the art. So it's not about um, maybe uh, we are not in competition. It's two different um, acts. It's just like um, you having a food, you have rice, you have jello rice. We have people who love jello rice, we have people who love fried rice, we have people who love white rice. So when you go for what you love, you enjoy it. The satisfaction you get is the 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 meeting point of what we are trying to achieve, just to get you laugh. So we have stand-up comedians that just speak, they, 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 they do speech. We have stand-up comedians that doesn't do speech. But then we are all trying to achieve one in to get you to laugh. Yeah, like you rightly said, you're just trying to, you're aiming at one goal. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also um, have some stand-up comedians who are no longer celebrated. We have the likes of Ali Baba and then the likes, and then we have skit makers who are the rave of the moment. And if you would agree with me, we have the last CCLN, we have a whole lot of them. And yes, you mentioned that you're, you're not in competition, but I think uh, stand-up comedians have been sidelined. And now we have skit makers because if you, if, you, if you attend some, some, uh, stand -up, um, com uh, some comedy event, you hardly see people. But people these days enjoy watching comedy on their phone. Uh, don't you feel this is one of the challenges comedians are going through these days? Okay, so, uh, so I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know the shows you've been attending, but I just had my show in Lagos, and I, I'm going to use myself as an, as an example. Okay. The and we had to go and get more chairs for people to sit down. Mm. And it was a comedy show, a stand-up comedy show, not a speech maker show. Okay. Do you understand? Now, the question is, can a stand-up comedian, can he go into speech making? Yes, 100%. Can a speech maker come into stand-up comedy? It's a little bit hard. And you can go and verify. Mm. We had a lot of them when they started out, they tried to do stand up comedy and they couldn't. Mm. Because stand up comedy, no, stand up comedy is not something you just um, dabble into. You need to be sure of what you're saying. You need to be sure you're funny. Mm. So it's not all speed makers that can do stand up. But mm. I can tell you 90% of stand up comedians, if they want to, they can do speed. Okay. All right. Um, Bide Koka, please hang in there. Uh, let me come back to Bengo. Almost the same question, you know, skit maker appears like they are the in thing right now, of course, and Amide just spoke about that. But then skit making is not entirely new because I remember years and years ago, most of the comedians, now the big ones, they have always been doing skits, but maybe to produce, I mean, to promote their comedy shows. I remember many AY lives that before AY goes on stage, you'll have seen skits from himself, from Bovi, from Bucci, from all of them. So it's not entirely new, no, but I think there is a commercial, they are commercializing of the same skit right now. And the same question, um, are skit makers, you know, a competition? Let me ask, in Oshun State here, let me bring it back home. Do we have skit makers, A-list skit makers, or is just everybody just doing everything? Um, before I answer that question, yeah. you were saying about um, something that, just like Mide said, um, mm. that um, you, we are not into competition with mm. um, this kit maker. Because mm. um, it's two different things, mm. and it's um, totally different from um, one another. So, um, yeah, in Ocean State, we have skit makers, mm. of course, and um, uh, we thank God, um, you know, the state is not lagging behind like we used to be. Mm. You know, the likes of um, Lai Wasa Wasabi, mm. you know, mm. did his thing from Moshobo, yes, did all his skits around the government um, sectariat before, you know, and um, the likes of Alaria is from Babalaria is from Moshobo, yeah, mm. you know. So, uh, myself, I, I also dabble into skit maker, though mm. I'm a stand up comedian, mm. but, I, you know, it takes. Um, it takes a, a, a special um, what do I, ability mm. for you as a, a comedian to also double into skit making. You know, you, if you have the talent and you know you can find your way around it, you can do it. Mm. It's two different things, but you can combine it. Going on stage is different from um, coming out um, 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 on camera to do that. So, 
in Ocean State, I, I, I can still say that we have a, a list of um, skip makers to aside stand up comedians. All right. Um, you know, um, I know you have something okay that yeah. you're planning for yourself, especially at this weekend. We'll get there shortly. But let me ask you do you feel left out? And I will explain myself. When I mean you, I mean comedians that are based here. Okay. You know, stand up comedians or even skit makers that are here. Because I'll give you an illustration. Many of the big guns, or bigger guns, if I may use that word, you just mentioned Alaria. Yeah. They are no more resident here. Yeah. You know, they've moved up, possibly. Or they moved on. Don't let me say up. Anywhere can be up. <laughs> so, um, but you see them once in a while, maybe yearly, they come to a show, they come to a show state, they do the actual big one, they leave again, you know. Uh, Bengali Inca will come, come to do his show, he leaves again. And you see the support, maximum support, people will turn out, you know, for these people. When people in Ocean, comedians in Ocean, do shows, sometimes, sometimes, not all the times, you see that the, that support, that crowd is not as big as those guys. So do you feel this is unfair? It's more like a capital flight. They come, do whatever you want to do. They leave again. You know, and they come and they leave again. Dr. Smile will come and do your show and he leaves again. But some of you that are here, you, you do everything with sweat, with everything, for you to have everything, I mean, that you get. Do you feel this is unfair? How well supported are the acts in Ocean? Um, first That's thing, the reason for my illustration. I, I understand, yes. So um, it's not like we're left out. First thing is um, preference. That's number one, you know. What I like um, is not what other people like. That's one. Then two is advantage of your name and personality. Mm. Fine. If Alibaba will come to Oshobo now, Alibaba probably might not have lived in Oshobo at all. Mm. But coming to Oshobo, the fact that it is Alibaba coming to Oshobo, you hear the name, you feel like, ah, no, the show must be a good one. Mm. I must attend that. Like him um, uh, approaching uh probably an establishment i'm a liver but i want to have a show here i want you to have no sponsorship it doesn't even have to say much because i don't worry we know you don't worry we are in full support but for someone you don't know him you don't know his name you know you just feel like okay fine i don't know what you want to offer but I, okay don't worry we'll support you when he leaves and then so, okay, but when he left, we don't know you know so that's why yeah you see most people support if you have your name Fine, if you have to build your brand to a particular level, mm. you can break grounds that you have never been to. That's why you see most Nigerian artists travel out, will sell out um, mm. event center outside right. Nigeria, mm. and you just feel like, I do, I can remember sell, sell out um, a show in, in India mm. and come back to Nigeria and just be like, ah, I'm a wani now. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I think that's what happens with people outside of Shun State who comes here. And just look, okay, fine, I have my fan base here, I can do it. So it's here. the name and the brand. So, yeah. So for people that are here, it, uh, not all, maybe some, maybe most, um, mm. my struggles to still get sponsors and um, yeah, people to attend exactly shows. that's what I'm saying. Because um, that's it, takes, support. it takes years of commitment and uh, sweats and, uh, and work to, to gain people's art. If you have been here right from the scratch people mm. know you and they know your ability right. that's why i say in my first um, um uh, uh, answering your question that mm. um, consistency is the key like um, when we know ah he's been doing it for long and when you are doing it right mm. yes it's it's uh, it's another thing doing it and doing it wrong all mm. the time it's different from what you are doing and you're doing it and people feel like no that guy you know when right. we attend to do it let me come in here before tommy will come in i know i said it you have something cooking for you this weekend and I hope you're almost done <laughs> with it. And I understand um, there is, um, it is not too popular having a one man um, headline show that which only you will be there cracking the people up. I remember years and years ago, I think the first time I heard of that was uh, Benga Deboye, the late Benga Deboye, when he went to London. And he was quite one of the earliest people to do stand up comedy. Although many persons won't know, it, it didn't start with um, Bobby and Basket, Benga Deboye, for me one of the realest, the most natural ever in this particular game. I think he went to London and did an headline show only him. Almost something similar is what you are dabbling into this weekend. How has it been for you planning for this year's show? Uh, it, has, it, has, it has not been an easy thing, but you know, what you love doing, yeah, and you, well, what you love and um, you do effortlessly. Mm. Fine, you know, like um, when we, you were talking with Mediocre Cardio, you mm. spoke about spontaneity, you mm. know, 
It's something like um, you create jokes around what happened. How many hours are you going for? Six hours. Only you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've done uh, it's not my first time actually. Okay. My 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 event has always been a one man show. I right. do every year, you know. Last year was um close to four hours, I think three hours, forty five or forty seven minutes. Wouldn't uh, you consider also, Guinness uh, world record? <laughs> <laughs> I the current And churning the, out of your own material. Yeah, yes, of course. My For own those personal hours. I don't do I don't do other people's material. I create my own jokes myself. That was a year. I, I had to rehearse with my DJ, my crew, mm -hmm. what I wanted to do the whole day. I went home to take my breath. Before I got back to the hall, I forgot the flash drive at home. So I just got in there. I told the guys, see, anything that comes, Let's I will go. run it. And I, I actually run, I think, three hours that day. Mm -hmm. So it, so it's uh, spontaneity when you run things that comes from you. And mm -hmm. for the Guinness World Record, I know it will work towards <laughs> that. I think the current, the current world holder is um, Scott. He's, he's a USA uh, uh, citizen and he's mm. holding 40 hours. I think. 40? Yeah. yeah. The, someone did it in Nigeria, Gandoki. Mm. Yeah, that's um, one of our, no, our guys. Did it, really Gandoki did, uh, yeah. I think in 2015, yeah, 48 hours. But I think it was not certified by Guinness. But we keep still saying it that Gandoki is our own. So yeah, uh, even yeah. if Guinea doesn't satisfy, we know that he you did knew it. what he did. So if anybody wants to break it, you have to do it. So as the support, hours. corporate sponsorship, do you have any support from people in government? Do you have support from your colleagues as well? And I, we are going to talk about cliques, you know, before this conversation uh, ends. And I'm going to ask um, Mide that as well. But what has the support been like? Uh, the support has been... Is it everything that you envisage that you are getting? Uh, not all, but at least um, to some extent, let me say 70, 75 percent. Of, um, How about from your colleagues? Yes, uh, no full support from, from colleagues, you know. When um, we thank God for the kind of um, uh, community that we are, yeah. you know, people always want to, when uh, people need your help, you know, mm -hmm. we have attended, there is nobody that you, you invite me for your event that wouldn't be to. Mm. And, um, you know, when you want to do your own, they feel like, okay, fine, I have to be at your event. People have always been asking me, my event, my show, your show, mm. it's a one-man show. Mm. Uh, are your colleagues coming? Right. Is it not because probably you had beef with somebody mm. you wanted to perform? I say, no, most of them are always on seat. They will sit down, come watch. And there are sometimes, you know, you need to illustrate some stuff and you feel like, okay, okay, you can say, okay, come on stage, join me. It that. might be a one-man show, but at long run, you need somebody to do and you need, okay, this is somebody that can, you know everybody's ability. Yeah. I invite most of them, come around, sit and watch, and it's right. a good wallet. So I have support from colleagues and all. So. Right. All right, let's look at social media as a tool. Okay. What role um, has social media played? in the, the growth of the Nigeria community. And social media, as um, I can say, has played a major role. Mm. Uh, has helped us in a lot of ways. You know? um, before the social media era, mm. if you don't have your TV, mm. uh, you don't have your radio, there's something we call radio comedy that the yeah. other time. Like mm. We do it on radio, you listen to it on mm. radio. There's radio jam drama mm -hmm. that you listen to. Mm. But now that we are in the era of social media, it makes it easy for everybody to see you to know you mm. that's why you were talking about skit makers you know breaking grounds on social media because mm. they feel like you know when you do your show people need to attend physically mm. see you aside you streaming online yeah. so now we have even taken it online so when we do our shows sometimes we stream, stream it, it online mm. fine now let's make our money there and social media has played a mm. major role mm. you know making people see the importance mm. Mm. Of, um, of, of stand up comedy journey and in Nigeria generally, I, I think um, social media has really helped us right. because we are a great user of, of social, social media, media space. Yes, very well. Um, Mide Koka, yes, I'm here. Yes, um, all right, very well. Let me ask you about this. And I might be putting you on the spot, but I know spontaneity is what you do for a living, so that should not be an issue okay. for you. Let's talk about okay. clicks. There are things that people like us. I don't mean like Bengu and yourself, you are the insiders. People like us, we hear, we see, we perceive. Um, you know, for me, as a layman, you might see, okay, there is the Lagos gang. We have the Abuja gang. The worry people will not allow us to hear what every time they are shouting, worry, worry. The people that belong possibly to the Amajupini gang, you know what I'm talking about? The AY gang. 
the basket mouth gang, mm. and there are some persons maybe they are gangless. <laughs> just, just to say, is this real? And let me even ask you, I mean, where do you belong? Which gang is yours? Uh, I belong to everybody. I belong to everybody because the truth is, um, I, I don't see any reason to belong to any gang because at the end of the day, we are all we all want to make people laugh and make money. So I belong to any gang that makes people laugh and they make money also. Mm, that that's your gang. I think that's the political side <laughs> of you speaking. You are trying to be diplomatic. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> maybe maybe fearing for backlash, but okay. But does it work? Do why do people do this? Is it they are they are you know, they are cocoon that they are comfortable with, or the gang that you belong depends on how far you will move because there are persons that feel it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but maybe if you belong to a particular carcass, maybe in Hollywood as well, you have the Lagos part, the Delta part, the Enugu people, and the people who do this. Does it have a way of affecting um, an act career? How far you will go, where you really belong? Yes, it's um, having. I, I, I won't like to call it gang because I don't see it as um, as a gang. I see it as people you are comfortable working with. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's something I I'm I'm very big on energy. I'm big on energy in the sense that um, you can't just meet with anybody and everybody. Everybody cannot like you, and you cannot like everybody. So we have this set of comedians that love to work with a certain set of people. Mm. Maybe they've been with they've worked with them for a long time and they've, they've been tested and trusted. So for any project they are going on, they just they have a, a, a body they work with already. And even if they are going to bring a new body, they, they make sure it's um, somebody that's been tested and trusted. They bring mm. them in and if they fit in, they stay there. If they don't fit in, mm. you won't see them after that first appearance. Mm. So I, I don't call it gang. I mm. call it people you're comfortable working with because it's like a surgeon. It's like a surgeon that, that, that needs to perform an operation and then you need to invite people from other parts of the country. For example, you want to maybe a doctor that wants to um, have um, help a pregnant woman to give birth. You don't just go outside and get into the nearest hospital and say, ah, who helps you to give birth here? Oh, yeah, yeah, come. I have money. Yeah, this is my house. I want to come and help you. No. He has somebody he works with. He calls that person. The person might be, so uh, maybe I'm in Lagos now. I'm around in Kenya. Maybe the, the, that person is on the island. You have to call that your friend, uh, Dr. Kunde, Dr. Shane, Dr. Bengu. Please, I need you to come and assist me with this operation so it can be right. successful. So you don't just call anybody. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, we do. have comedians that have worked with some certain set of people for a long time and they are comfortable with that person. Right. They are comfortable with that body and they just want to ride with it and you know to, to achieve their aim. All so right. it's really not a gang, it's mm. just it's just a circle, and you know, the smaller your circle, the better for you. Right, right. Very well. And you know, um some might even call it a caucus, not really the word gang might not really be a bath in so to say. Dr. Bengo is uh, preparing for a show. You have just had yours, you know, by the way. And um, uh, let me ask you, how financially rewarding is it, you know, for you to pick this up as a career? And secondly, does a comedian have to always do a show, you know, to really make a statement that, yes, I've arrived? Does it really take a show? Well, uh, sometimes it takes a show because the truth is relevance is part of the game. You need to be relevant. People need to know you are there. And, you know, it's not the time you get invites to perform at other people's shows. So, for example, you might only get, say, six invites to come perform. And most of the time, you don't even get to get the, clip, the clips from the shows on time for you to post so people see what you're up to. So you need your own show, especially when you know you have the jokes, you have the content to deliver, you need your own show. And the highest you get at other people's show is 10 minutes. That's the highest. 
even before 10 minutes, they go down, they tell you, say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, we need another person to come up. So you need your own show mm. to take your time to perform and let your people see that, your fans see that, oh man, this guy is still there, is still tight, is still funny. So you need your show. It might not be yearly, it might be once in two years, it might be once in three years, but you need that show. You need that show. It's not a show for a reason. You need to show. All right. Show this for everything. You need to show so mm. that people will see you. And trust me, five minutes at other people's shows is not enough for you to show. And that's why Dengo is saying he wants to be on stage for three hours. Want to... Baba mm. wants show. Me funny say, me one be. Me one be say. Okay, now. All right. Very good. Very well. You know, who, you know, spontaneity is one of the strong points of um, comedians. And uh, you have the next, that's me, they will, before we come back to Bengu's right now. I mean, Bengu, Dr. Bengu, rather. Mede Koka, you have the next one minute to crack us up. We won't have somebody of your, start your hair. I won't get to enjoy one, especially our viewers we won't get to enjoy one from you. So the next 60 seconds is yours. You just put me on the spot, and I'll ask you a question. Uh, I've, I've, thank God we have a doctor in the in the house. If you if you meet a doctor friend of yours on the road, would you ask him to give you injection immediately just because of the doctor? Okay. The, the, I'm, the, I'm asking the, the, I'm the way this would you, would you, the way this program works, you, I'm the one who asks the question. If you meet Anthony Joshua yeah. right now, are you going to ask? you because it's a boxer really do you know that we no. have some musicians that are like invited on a show yeah. and before they leave you'll tell you tell them okay you have 60 seconds to sing that's what he's doing he's he's started already oh yeah oh okay i think he was so, so questioning the question now is the question now is um when you tell a comedian to oh yeah family the truth is, you are ready already. You are ready. See, comedy in Nigeria is kind of, I don't know, but when you tell a comedian, oh yeah, make me laugh. The okay. truth is, you might not laugh <laughs> because you are conscious. Oh, by the way, I'm laughing, yeah, by the way. Maybe yeah, you have just done the work. <laughs> we need to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I understand what you are trying to do. And the fact that you are meeting a doctor, you don't just say, oh yeah, start treating me. Mm. But sometimes you see a doctor, you, you tell the doctor your symptoms. You just you run a you test. To do. Yeah. But by the way, we get back to you. Let me come back. Bro, to... can you tell me your problem now? Can you tell me what problem do you have? Problem? Actually, it's not about problems. It's about you making us laugh. All right, let's come back to Bengo. Really, let's talk about. Um, and I maybe made a mistake. How financially rewarding is it for you to pick up this as a career? Does yeah. it pay the bills? Uh, These said, things we see on social media, the, the, the jackets, the blinks, the shoes, the cars. Is it from comedy? Um, one thing I, I, I say about this, uh, the, the other time when I was, I, was, I said uh, before, people uh, have these, uh, they just do it for, for fun. Right. But now we, we, we took it, take it up as a, as, as, as a career. career. Yeah. Mm. Yes, of course. And it's in two ways. When you say you're putting up a show, it's a showbiz. And it's two words combined together. A show and business. business yeah. So it's combined together. So when you sell tickets to people and uh, you, know, you, you get your money, it's not probably all the money that is coming back to your account. You two, you have to, you know, rainbows back, you know, pay for all, pay for sound, pay for screen, bouncers, logistics, you know. So um, our rewarding it is, you know, it depends on how your strength is mm -hmm. and how far you can go with getting sponsors and, uh, you know, getting it up. But, um, you know, when you eat the height of it, there are shows that you do that, um, let me make example of um, a, a Bovi, when Bovi does his man on fire, you know, mm -hmm. you, know you just have these people that are just going, okay, uh, what takes you to do this event? Just say, okay, I I'm just acting an example, yeah, not yeah, the exact exactly, amount, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, okay, this whole thing will take me 15 million. Naira. Okay, fine, this is your 15 million with the quotation. Okay, take it. So mm -hmm. we take the show up from us. So they don't do uh, the publicity, ticket, and all. They can now make probably 50, 40 million naira from me, but your own money has been paid to your account. Yeah. Fine, have and it. the pressure is you know, The pressure is relaxed. You know, so it, that's why I said it depends on how your strength is and how you can work with that's why i say building your brand to some particular extent mm. will lead i know paying the bills 
from from way back you know pays at the later yeah, it Mendo. doesn't start yeah yeah and because you are posting him right now beyond you doing your show okay the guys in ocean state yeah many of you 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 know yourselves um how will you describe the entertainment now i'm broadening the spectrum beyond comedy the entertainment sector in ocean state how will you rate it behind average or is development the state government always have any government at any level always have a part to play in developing the terri ter um, tourism i was about saying terrorism <laughs> for the tourism <laughs> part and the entertainment part how has it been in ocean state are they hoping the administration you know uh, that's in charge right now are they open to you people in terms of support Okay, um, I'll, I'll start from um, the industry where you asked first. Um, we, we are not there yet. Fine. We are just um, getting there. You know? Like I said, the other day, when people don't know the value of what you do, mm. and uh, we have most people that travel a lot, so when you go out, you see what people are doing. When you come back home and you see somebody doing something similar, you feel like, oh, we need to encourage this person. So, and we that we are here um, trying to make um, people see the importance of mm -hmm. it. And I think it's not like what it used to be, you know. Formerly when you have an event and you say, um, I'm selling my table for 200,000, they feel mm -hmm. like, ah, funkini, mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. 200,000, you know. So I say, my friend 30, my friend 50,000, you know, but now, you can confidently say I have a table for one million or I have mm -hmm. five hundred thousand, and people will say, "Okay." Are you no sure? Worry. In Ocean State? State? Yes, of course. People that know the value to support. Do you have those people in Ocean State? Uh, <laughs> I hope Mide is not listening, so that doesn't cast us. But let's just talk. That's about how you see the likes of Doctor Smile, Alia, Bingari, who come and makes okay. We have a table. Okay, let so me the have brand a table for one million. Have let me have play. a table for yes. That's what I say. Now it depends on your brand. Somebody that you don't know at mm, all mm. comes from nowhere, right. and your name too. No, yeah, uh, sure. the kind of the names you your brand bears, you know, somebody cannot just come. That's why I say when you are building your brand, no branding does not mean that the clothes you wear mm. most times it depends on you, what you do, your name, and um, you know somebody that just like my name is Baba Said comedy and just comes to you, you don't know him for any reason. Yeah, I said right. my name is Baba Said. Mm. Okay, I want to have an event. My okay, right. my table is one million, five million. You just right. like okay, I fine. Don't worry. Very well. I say mm. that, that. All right, I have a two in one question for you. Uh, firstly. I would like to ask you, are there content that are off limits as a skit maker, as a stand-up com comedian? Mm. Like I asked the media earlier, he mentioned that he, he, got, he gets his um, inspiration from what's happening, politics and the likes. And most of this are sensitive uh, materials to mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. How do you tackle this as a stand-up comedian, as a skit maker? Mm -hmm. Do you use most of this content? Uh, or what are the reception you get after that? And the next question is, what are the challenges? Uh, what are the challenges um, comedians are facing in Nigeria? Okay, fine. Um, the first one, the first question is, um, you know, people um, um, getting around with um, um, comedy. You know, when you... Uh, when you move around with um, uh, people uh, joking around with it, 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 it doesn't mean that um, you don't know what to do around it. Fine. Um, so the question is, um, what... Um, are there, are there, there contents content that are off, limits. off limits? In yeah. comedy, there is, there is a particular um, comedy we call black comedy. Mm. Okay. Black comedy is a comedy that deals with... Um, uh, offensive um, mm. uh, words mm. that uh, hurt people with what happens to them physically. Mm. Like, let me say, someone that could not walk. Mm. Disability. Mm. Is this, uh, or someone that lives with disability. Call it dark humor. Yeah. So when you make joke about that person sitting right there, talking mm. about him mm. not uh, standing up, you get mm. it. Uh, so um, that's, it's a type of comedy on its own. Mm. But, you know, it depends on initiative and um, uh, how creative you are All right. to present that, that joke at that moment. Thing. It's just like you are meeting a critic about something. It has mm. to be constructive. Mm. You get it? And at the end of it, um, when, okay, like me personally, I, I make jokes about, you know, Nollywood movies mm. a lot. Right. Especially Yoruba Nollywood, how they act. Mm. If I notice any mistake in it. <sighs> but, you know, you have to commend them at the yeah. end of it. Like, okay, that was yeah. not what... 
it is now. It's worse. What it was Bengal, before. We understand. We must and go. For the your, challenges. your show is this weekend. <laughs> yes. When? This Sunday. Okay. Let's this just Sunday. give you this five Sunday. seconds of free advert. This Sunday. Yeah. Time. Five seconds. Yeah. Okay, my show, one man show is coming up in the show, bro. August yeah. 25, one man show, our right, event center, red carpet, 2 p.m., main yeah. event, 3 p.m. All right, I think that's uh, more than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to thank you. Mide, let me take it off from here. I mean, we, we round it off. Are you with me? I'm with you, sir. Yeah, that was a time a colleague of yours uh, forever said that um, there is no off limit content. Every content is can be a joke. It depends. On the way you are listening, many persons disagree. Even myself, you know, personalized I think there are some things that are too sensitive. Do you believe in that as well? And I'll take that as your parting shot. Thirty seconds. No. So um, every topic is a topic. There is no topic that um, often are able to deliver and do justice to that topic because the truth is it's comedy. So if you are saying some topics should be discussed and then some topics should not be discussed, you want that to be discussed. What what um why why are you being biased? Mm. We need to talk about everything. Now it depends on how you are able to deliver and um you know marshal your points so that nobody gets offended. And then you can't control who gets offended and who doesn't get offended because it's a common issue. You have to be open-minded because we need a subject matter. We need to have a subject. Right. Without a subject, a joke is not complete. All right. So one person collect, one body must collect, one couple must <laughs> Like, right. you just need to have a good. Thank you very much. Hello, Shilly Akin Tomide, a coca, popularly known as Mide Coca CFA. Thank you for your time. One of these days when you come into town, we'd like to have you in our studios. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. And Dr. Bengo, we wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm grateful. Thank you for right. having me this and morning. This will be the convenient place for us to anchor this morning. Or to for us to end the show because that will anchor and lead people into a problem. Femi Ojo is my name. Have a fabulous weekend to yourself. God willing, we'll return on Monday. And I am Tommy Lola Daniel. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, bye.